So in a little over a week, the MPP will head to a super delegates congress to select the final five to go for the November National Delegates Congress of the party to elect a flag bearer for the 2024 general elections. Now, whoever is elected will lead the MPP, hopefully, to victory in the 2024 elections. There are so many who've put themselves up for election. At the last count, we had 10. Now, the Super Delegates Congress will trim the number to five. Now, one of the key, you know, aspirants in the race to lead the MPP in the 2024 elections is the former Minister for Food and Agriculture. He's also a former member of parliament for quite so in the Ashanti area. He's not new to politics. In fact, politics run through the blood from his father, Ochami Akoto, up until now. Now, he's hoping to hold the flag of the MPP into the 2024 elections. Today, we are privileged to have him as we look forward into the Super Delegates Congress of the party. Dr. Owusu Afiye Akoto is my guest here on Joins. Doctor, you're welcome. Thank you very much. And how has it been? You've been touring the entire country. Yes. Has that put, you know, stress on you physically and everything? Are you okay for yeah. the tax ahead? I'm more than okay. In fact, I'm familiar with going around the country, as you know, mm. since 2017 when I was appointed Minister for Food and Agriculture. I took the decision that I was going to be stuck in the air condition in my office in Accra that every year I visit all the um, regions mm. to interact with farmers and other stakeholders like extension officers, uh, fertilizers, suppliers, uh, agro-processors, traditional rulers and all of that. And in that time, um, in the five years, because 2020, because of COVID, nobody could travel. I was good to my word and went around. The last mm. time was on the 22nd of December, just the past year, when I completed my tour of the country with a visit to the Yana in his palace in Yendi. So through that, I have gotten to have interactions. As you know, most of these delegates are farmers. Mm. So whilst I'm doing my work, I'm also meeting them. And I also make sure that in each region I go, even if I finish the work at 10 o'clock, I will still make time to meet the party executives mm. to know what is going on. So through that, I've become very familiar uh, with each and every one of the 10 and later on 16 regions, mm. the additional states which were created uh, in 2020. So it's something that um, I'm familiar with, with in terms of their problems and their troubles. And the thing is, again, I, I had an even closer uh, view of the party situation mm. in 2020 when for the 10 months that the president was campaigning I was with him all the time. In the lead up to the last elections? To the last elections mm. and that gave me an even closer view of what is happening in the party mm. and what I saw um, did not uh, impress me. I mean you could see that our soldiers that is the polling stations uh, uh, executives mm. Their supervisors, the constituency executives, everywhere you went, they were complaining. About what? Yenyashi, a comedy. Has it not been a current course since 1992? Well, no, I think the, the intensity this time was distinctively more uh, shrill than before. Okay. And since then, in my campaigning to this last minute, going around the country, is the same kind of uh, reports that you hear. Mm. Um, so, the morale of the party is down. That is what I, I uh, my assessment of the situation. And is that is that a reason for the parties? Some would describe as poor performance, even though yes. you won the last election. Yeah, but, but it win. came it came at a very high price. Yes, does that explain the reason for that performance? Even though you had implemented the free SHS and the planting for food and jobs, and yes. people were with the view that we we're going to just have it easy. Yeah, but that's the point I was coming to. Mm. That the government had delivered on this promise to this country in terms of economic performance. Mm. And you've cited two very clear, one social, one economic intervention, which has been very popular and has a mass appeal to the people. Mm. So you, you would have thought that going to the people for another term, mm. that the result would be even better than the initial one, because you'd fulfilled most of the promises. And lo and behold, it didn't happen. Mm. In fact, we nearly, I consider that, we nearly lost the election. Wow. And now we have 137, 137. 
the difference of us being the majority is just one person who went independent from our side because of the, the same things happening in this party. Mm. He decided to go independent. He won. And then, of course, he had to say that he's working with us. Mm. And that's why we are a majority. Right. Otherwise, we would have been a minority. Exactly. And then the same thing for the speakership. Mm. That a uh, very, very high-powered person like Professor Marco Kwe will go to an election <laughs> with uh, this, uh, the current speaker mm. and, and lost because some of our own uh, um, MPs decided that they were not going to vote for for him. But, but that, that, that for me, Doctor, is quite interesting. That even though you had people who had gone to election, they won on the ticket of the MPP and they had taken the parliamentary oath proudly, we still nurture some you know, resentment to the extent that they voted against the party's choice of a speaker. Yeah, but that, that really tells you that there's no discipline in the party. What is going on is a classic example where people are, are, are publicly campaigning high party officials are campaigning for one candidate mm. against the instructions the regulations of the party and they know that nobody will say boo to them you can't and any institution cannot live without discipline you think people should endorse as far as ahead of the elections no but i mean that is that is wrong it is not in our, our constitution mm -hmm. somebody sitting somewhere can say, can say i'm endorsed but not a chairman of a party and it's become free for all and they know that nothing will happen to them and yet the people who have been chosen to to manage this party have the authority to actually punish people for going against the rules and regulations and they're not cracking the whip and so everybody is doing whatever they want and why is it so well why is it so because of uh, um, uh, it's not immediate this is what i'm saying that in my four five years going around the country mm. you could sense that there is that the, the, the disputes are not settled. People, they allow it to fester to the point that it becomes personal. And then that, that is what costs us so many seats. Mm. And, you know, when, I, when we go to Cape, uh, 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 Central Region, that's when I knew that we are in trouble. Because, you know, the old thing about skirt and blouse in the 1990s, which people had forgotten about, suddenly everywhere we went, it was skirt and blouse. And, and lo and behold, we lost most of the seas in the central region. So we need discipline. We need to really get this party up and going. And the, the morale, as I said, I detected the morale was down. And at the last minute, to be honest, I was wondering whether we were going to make it. Mm. Fortunately, we made it by, the, <laughs> by, by this, because yeah. even our presidential candidate, who beat Mahama with over one million, million votes. votes. That had to settle for a little over 500,000. Exactly. So, so, so that is what is happening in this party, and we need to really reform this party and bring it up to scratch. And my, uh, my diagnosis mm. uh, of th what is wrong with the party will, will come with what should we do about it. Yeah, exactly, that's the question. I wanted to teach you a little bit yeah, on the, the end, discipline aspect yes. and what apart you think it should be done right now. Yeah. Apart from the discipline, there is the issue of money. This party doesn't have the resources of its own. And if a party which can grow over 6 million votes, and this was nearly what, 70 years old, mm. cannot find a means to finance itself and has to rely on the handouts of its own government and individuals, then uh, there's no future for the party. And, and your, I think your proposal is that the party should be modeled along the ANC uh, exactly. you know, structures in South Africa exactly. where it is deeply involved in business. Yes, it okay. has to. Yeah. And because otherwise, mm -hmm. it has to have the independence of its own resources mm -hmm. to be able to pay its workers and its activists well and also have surpluses to develop the, 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 the youth of this country because they are the future mm -hmm. of the party. If we cannot do that, then the future is very dim for us. So in the absence of such a structure, when you hear some of the aspirants say that when I come, I will pay polling station executives. How are they going to pay 210,000 people? Where is the money? Mm. Public sector, we know we've entered into an agreement with the IMF, which says that we've frozen public sector employment. Yeah. So, and the private sector, who is going to employ those people? 
And do you know how many, apart from the 210, there's 1.25 million uh, uh, youth between the age of 17 and 25 mm. who are unemployed. These people, those from universities, and so it takes them an average of seven years before they can get a job. Mm. So if you make that promise, where is the money going to come from? Okay. But uh, we'll, we'll stay a little longer on your plans going forward. Yes. Uh, just because you've been across the country, now not to, you know, <laughs> educate them on the planting of wood, yes. but to tell them the reason why they should consider you yes. as the, the best candidate to lead the party in the 2024 yes. elections. Uh, we'll, we'll get into the super delegates, but just a few comments on the indiscipline that you touched on. Right. How do you want the current leadership to deal with this? We have a few days to go. Mm -hmm. And I see publications in the media I see people you know endorse certain candidates certain aspirants with their pictures and they even makes it appear as though they have the support of the entire region they represent in support of a particular candidate yes. how injurious is this to the future of the concepts of unity and cohesion and how do you want the current leadership address this matter once and for all see one this is a very dangerous path all those people making public pronouncements, mm. they happen to be high government officials. Right. Cabinet ministers, exactly. ministers, party yes. chairmen. So, so what happens if they are, that candidate does not win? Because what they are doing is really egging, egging the, the rest of the contestants in the, in, the, in the country. And people feel very strongly that it is a misconduct for mm. them to go the way they are going. And there's some kind of uh, uh, force being used, you know, intimidation. I mean, I receive complaints on my tri tri trips. Those contractors who are not seen to be for this candidate, they are not paid they are, uh, when they've completed their jobs and they've taken huge sums of money from the banks and the interest rates are what, 35, 50, uh, 40 percent. And, uh, you know, they're they are being punished for just for saying For supporting that, somebody yeah, else. Exactly. You know, so it's so, so if you, there's an executive whip. Well, I don't know about executive whip. I don't know what an executive whip is. But if somebody has done a job, a contract with the government, and they are not paid, why others who declare for the particular candidates are paid? Who is this, who is this candidate? These are people in the party who have benefited, and the government who have benefited from the, the sweat of the party because the party which wins as power in 2016 for us to form a government in 2017 mm. and they feel uh, that they've been they've been let uh, 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 down mm. because the jobs and the things that they were expecting haven't come and okay. it's not as if it's in one region or one sector all over i mean i traveled this country mm. even this year i've traveled that twice twice or three times around the country you know and the they, they consistently the complaint is that in Yashi, mm. a comedy, and at the same time they see all these very uh, government officials going in 10 to 20 uh, 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 vehicles, convoys, okay. uh, convoys and all of that and that doesn't signal it doesn't give a good signal but, 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 the but, but, for the food but, storage but doctor, this, this would be worrying especially if this is a family Affair, and then you have this intimidation yes. and yeah. all those issues. Yeah. And and you know, it's it, it's even worse than between NDC and MPP. Have you alerted the, the, the leadership of the party? Oh yes, they, they are aware. They are aware. I mean, some of these chairmen, uh, without any reason, they are suspending other constituency chairmen, regional chairmen, suspending constituency chairmen because they don't support their candidate and all of that. It comes to their attention. Petitions are flowing into. Uh, headquarters and all of that. So, is there an attempt to address it? Well, I, I hope so. Mm -hmm. I mean, I am not following that. Okay. I'm actually following my campaign of communicating directly with the 961 people, as many of them as possible, on a personal level, to share my vi my vision with them and to plead with them that they should vote for me because I'm the best candidate to fix the party and then to fix the country. And how is that going? It's going very well, mm -hmm. to be honest. You know, as I said, I've been around every year. It's my policy to go around all the 10 regions and then later on the six additional regions which were created. I go around every year except 2020 mm. because of COVID, nobody yeah. could travel. So I'm familiar with the territory. I'm familiar with the party people. And, you know, now we're getting specifically to 
constituency executives, we are getting to uh, uh, regional executives, to the MPs and the, uh, uh, and the other stakeholders who form the 961 collegiate which is going to vote on us. And as many of them as possible, I have had personal contact to convey my message. And first of all, the diagnostics, that there's something wrong with this party. Mm. And most of them agree with me. The lack of discipline, the way people are con uh, uh, holding themselves and conducting themselves, senior party people mis misconducting themselves, mm. openly, and nobody saying anything. See, that, that's the difference. If somebody had written to say, look, uh, regulation A, B, C, it says this and this and that. We have the evidence of a video, this, this, this. Come and explain yourself. Maybe people will be a bit careful, but no, nobody is doing anything. So anything goes. And, and that is uh, what is happening. But I can tell you, while that, this is going on, people see the injustice in the whole thing. Mm. When I say people, I'm talking about party the people. party people. And it's really <laughs> having the opposite effect. Should, should the party crack the whip on those who are endorsing the aspirants? Of course. So, so some would say that is the individual right. No, 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 no. How can it be an individual right if the party says that you shouldn't openly support one party, one person, and you openly declare on television, on video, and so consistently several times and nothing is done in action? Mm -hmm. So where, 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 where do we it, go? It, 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 is it because they are seven ministers? Because I know that your relationship with Daniel Kufuor the days back anywhere, your, your, your support for him was unwavering oh, yes. until he became president. But then also others will say that it, it, the party was in opposition then. So the difference is what? Is it because they are ministers, seven government appointees? We've had chief executive who, who virtually left their office and yes. now following some, some of their Yeah, yeah but uh, you see, it's a bad signal for the country. It's not only just for uh, MPP, it's not an easy MPP matter. Mm. It is, a, it is the, a, a nation issue, okay. a national issue mm. that you are employed to do to serve a government and then uh, you leave your position uh, like when the vice president was going to uh, submit his forms. Parliament shut down mm. because all the uh, majority MPs were mm. in uh, Big bus, buses, and okay. so on. The coaches mm. to go and accompany. And support him. Yeah. Okay. I mean, the, the country sees this, and it, uh, it's not a good sign for us. Now let's talk about you. Let's move away from the concerns that you've raised, which are legitimate, and I'm hoping that the party leadership will address it mm. as you, you all warm up to the super delegates. If it's uh, not too late. Uh, yeah, else. super delegates, uh, Congress of the party. Uh, Doctor Owusu Efia Koto. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> your fa your family history precedes you. Uh, are you the one the party should entrust the destiny into? Very much and, so. And why should that be? Because I come from the root of the party. And apart from my heritage, I have served this party well. Mm. We, between me and J.H. Mensah of late, may he rest in peace. Mm formed the Danko Buzia Club in London, which is now the UK branch of the NPP, mm. in 1990, 1991. When NPP was formed here in Ghana, we changed to NPP UK and Ireland, mm. branch of the NPP. So we've been there in this current dispensation right before the beginning. During the first Congress of the NPP, uh, at the Great Hall in Adelaide, mm. I came from London to represent the UK branch to give deliver my speech. Those who were there will remember. As soon as I mounted the podium and I started speaking, lights went off. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop my speech. Okay. And then subsequently for another eight hours or so. So the things were piling up. Mm. And I couldn't even deliver this uh, after that because we we're running late, we we're rushing through and all of that. And then having come to be a member of parliament it, for eight years in Kwadasu, the people mm. of Kwadasu in Kumasi, in opposition, all the things that uh, NDC were doing, the government of uh, President Mahama was doing, we were in the forefront criticizing him on the floor of parliament in press conferences, going around the country, so we also go so anywhere taking our case to the people, the masses, and all of that. Mm. So 
we, we, we did what we could do in opposition for eight years before mm. we came into, into office. Right. And everybody will tell you that as a ranking member, first as a deputy ranking, and secondly as a ranking member of food, agriculture, and cocoa affairs, I did what I could to oppose this regime, which was, I think I would say, the worst government we've had with a doom so for three, four years continuous and all of that London has with this pay or uh, pay or uh, whatever they call it, mm. whether you use or you don't use, you pay. you pay. I mean, if it was their own property, I don't think they would even think of signing on the dollar line, but they did and they have landed us in billions of dollars of payments for nothing as we speak. Yeah. You know, so, so, so we have been very, and then of course six years in, a, in in government of Akufuado, planting for food and jobs, taking this to the farmers of Ghana to give them the new technology of improved seed and fertilizer to better their lives. I don't have to say it, but you can see from the interaction with farmers up and down the country that they were very, very happy with my administration. Not only that, it was reflected also in the national text that in 2021, the rate of growth of the agricultural sector was 8.4 percent, the yeah. highest ever in this republic, fourth republic, and and taking it from by 1.2 percent in 2016 and bringing it all the way to 8.4 percent, when the AU target yeah. average is 6 percent for agricultural sector for any member. We went well below, beyond. I, I yet to complain that with all of this, you didn't get the needed support and resources to yes yes to, to, to carry do the things that you, yeah, you wanted uh, to do absolutely i mm -hmm. mean and you know with, with that apart from the interface with the farmers to improve their productivity and the adoption of new technology mm. and all of that rehabilitating the, the extension services i was supposed to have 4400 extension officers when i did the count there were only 1250 left and those ones in the next five years were all going to go on pension so there was virtually no extension mm. and extension is the link between science and the farmer once you cut it Science is totally off the farmer. Right. So I had to appeal urgently to cabinet to allow me to employ 3,000 people, which mm -hmm. they did. So gave me 2,500 and then the other uh, scheme for the graduates unemployed, which came in, they also added another 1,000 uh, to it so that we're able to reestablish extension service of mm. motorbikes and new vehicles for their district of uh, extension officers, new uniforms and, and all of those things. And you know, that really changed the whole face of it. So you think the farmer today is better off oh, than mean, six years ago in terms oh, of yeah. financial independence? Oh, definitely. Because you see, whilst they were doing, for instance, maize, they were doing five bags per he every hectare, a bag of 50 kilograms five bags, so mm. 250 kilograms. Right. With a change in, with improved uh, variety of maize, hybrid, and fertilizer, you could go up to 30, 40 bags. Okay. Can you imagine five mm. bags to, I mean, multiples. Mm. So it was no longer a question of uh, 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 planting to feed your family, but planting to do business with the surpluses by selling and getting the money to buy clothing, things that you couldn't mm. afford before. And you go to the northern part of the country, you go to uh, Volta and others, even Greater Accra here, the rural areas, Sege and Nada and so on, farmers will tell you that okay. they've never had it so good. Right, so two key issues that this government implemented uh, when it came to power in 2017, the free SHS and of course the planting for food and jobs which you spearheaded. Now some will say that these two alone should be enough to keep the MPP in power for as long as it is because in the process you've cultivated new voters whose affiliation to the party should never be an issue. Yet you are struggling to hold on to power with the, the slogan of breaking the eight. How, do you, how are you approaching this and how is it possible that in spite of the economic situation that we have in the country, the, the resentment, the MPP is still capable of breaking the eight under you? Yeah, because the, econ the economic situation has deteriorated so fast, so quickly. Nobody, a year before we ran to the IMF, nobody could imagine that the situation would be the case. Mm -hmm. 
maybe a few people who, who knew exactly what was going on with the figures. But as a cabinet minister, I didn't have any information to affect that in the next six, eight months, nine months. Yes, going to be. We'll be, the money will run out <laughs> and that we'll be cut off from the international credit mm. uh, community and that we would have to run to the IMF a bit late to the extent that we have to print money, the central bank had to print what well, 50 billion CDs of money now to support, know, to support the government. You know, this is uh, in a generation, I don't think this country has gone through that. So we have a tall order, mm. and therefore the machinery that we, we rely on to, for us to retain power, which is the party, mm. has to be retooled. And I'm saying that mm -hmm. if the party continues the way it is, the indiscipline that we are seeing and nothing happening to anybody and so on, then breaking the aid is going to be extremely difficult. But how, how, what, how what, I want to, what I would want to do mm -hmm. is to change the psychology of the, of, of, of the people, of the, of the stakeholders, mm -hmm. by saying that this is my vision for the party. This is my vision for, for the nation vote me, give me the flat bearership, and with this vision I can convince the people of Ghana mm -hmm. that I'm bringing something better. So whether you've gone hungry for seven years or whatever, forget it. You forgive us. We are going to turn a new leaf. You know, you have to give them some hope that your rhetoric is totally different, that you mean what you say, mm -hmm. that you are capable of doing it because they see you do it in the, in the Ministry of Food and Agriculture. And are they listening to you? Oh, very much. In fact, in a lot of places, especially in the live farming community, I don't have to talk too much. Because they themselves are bearing witness mm. that I was this, you came and this, and, and I meet them all the time. Mm. Especially the, the, the constituency chairman and so on. Exactly. Most of them, as I said, are farmers. You go to Brohafu, Bono Afu, Bono East. Uh, you go to the five northern region, you go to Savannah, you go to Segei and Ada in Greater Accra, go to Eastern region. Mm. People are bearing witness that look, it's because of you now I have a 20 acre uh, oil palm uh, plantation because you said this here and uh, we are, you, tell, you showed us where to go for the seedlings. It's very gratifying mm. to know that people have that kind of confidence. Okay. And I know that those bearing witness definitely they have benefited. And they see that my program for the future, for the whole nation, for mm -hmm. transforming the economy, is exactly the same thing that I've done with them. Okay. So they have their, their, their confidence. They have the confidence. Mm -hmm. And I can tell you that I'm not making too much noise. If you hear me, I don't attack anybody. I just focus on my, my, my track record and what I, the vision I have using agriculture to transform the economy of this country. Mm. That's all I'm, I'm saying. And it's going down extremely well. I can tell you that. So definitely you'll be counted among the five. Oh, oh that one is... Beyond. It's a done deal. Yeah, yeah, but it's not <laughs> that. It's uh, within the five. Mm -hmm. How well I perform is what I'm thinking about now. Sure. <laughs> you know, it's not being a part of the five. Mm -hmm. I don't think that is an issue. But... The people of Ghana will rise up in the, well, not rise up, they will get in the evening of 2026 mm -hmm. to realize that the noise do not vote. The noises do not vote. It's the, 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 the message with votes. Yeah. They because the people who are voting are quite identified. Yes. Oh, yes. And you've been speaking to them. Yes. Yeah, have, 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 you have concerns with the, with, the, with the register or does everything okay with it? The register for the super delegates. Oh, just one or two that we brought to the attention of the elections committee, and they've been very cooperative. Mm. They've investigated and they've corrected them. So I don't have any problem. And the party also issued uh, some guidelines. Uh, yes. One of them that uh, ministers, MPs, MMDC should not act as polling station executives, uh, uh, agents, and agents. Yes, they are also implementing a system such that the the ballots will not be tracked so that people will not be able to identify how yes. somebody voted. Right. Or are these welcoming guidelines? No, these are guidelines that we proposed. Okay. We proposed the Electoral Commission accepted, the, uh, the IGP has accepted. Mm. There's one uh, introduction that you've, you failed to, to, okay. to, to give. That is, 
everybody will be searched to make sure they don't take any electronic thing into the boot. Okay. So they will uh, do what they, uh, they use uh, the laser scanners, okay. scanners mm. like you're going to uh, go onto an aircraft mm. at the airport, the way they scan you. The same thing is going to happen to each of the 916 to make sure that you're not carrying any item which will enable you to take a picture. And physically, it will be done. Mm. The IGP has assured us that his top policemen will be distributed across the country. They will be in charge at each of the booths. He has assured us that. So that local uh, connections between uh, local party people and uh, local police and so on will not, will not work. Mm. So what we couldn't achieve by saying that we should all come to one place to and vote, vote so that everybody will see it. We have achieved through these new measures that we are mm. taking. And that is reassuring the party across the, uh, the, the, the country that yes, we are going to have a, a, a secret ballot mm -hmm. which is ensure, enshrined in the constitution of the Republic of Ghana mm -hmm. by which party people are broken for their own interest. This time it's not going to happen. And you are confident that this, this is on the paper in terms of implementation. You have absolute faith in the. Well, we have agents. Uh, yes, to, to implement everything yeah, yeah. according to what is on the ground. We have two agents mm -hmm. at the police station. Mm -hmm. Our agents, each of the ten, every, everybody will have their agents there. So if you want to break it, the police are there. The electoral commission return officer is sitting there. So you come and break it and say you are taking your phone into. Uh, regardless of your taking your phone into the boot, you see what will happen. Do, do you give you on the president assurance that you will remain neutral throughout the process? Who? The president assurance that you will remain neutral throughout the process. How much of comfort does that give you? Well, I mean, as he said, he has one vote. The polling station youth organizer has one vote. Mm. So, well, what, what comfort are you talking about? Mm. <laughs> it doesn't, for me, it's neutral. I mean, it doesn't make... That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, why would that... Uh, he has a vote. I don't have a vote because mm. I, I don't qualify to, to vote. But other colleagues of mine have votes because mm. they are members of the council. They are former uh, executive of the national executive of the party and so on. So some vote, some don't vote, but <laughs> that's what it is. Clearly, this is a step up from MP now to the highest officer of the president. How, how, how is your family, you know, rolling along with you on oh, this journey? Oh, <laughs> very, very supportive. Mm. Because they, they, they have faith in me. Mm -hmm. They know the kind of confidence that I have in myself. They've seen me perform in the ministry and the, in parliament and then in my previous jobs, careers that I've followed abroad mm. and so on. So they, 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 and I have the energies. Right. And that's the main thing. Mm. I have uh, plenty of energy. I mean, <laughs> uh, one uh, of your colleagues asked me, oh, they're talking about age. I said, look, anyone should come on the tennis court <laughs> for two hours in the sun, uh -huh. and I'm going to beat them <laughs> flat. <laughs> you know, right. that's how confident I am mm. with my health and, and my, my enthusiasm for this party. See, this party is my family. Mm. So when I see this party going down the way it's going, uh, lack of discipline and lack of whips and all those things, it really breaks my heart. And we need to put this party on an even keel to make it much bigger because we are the only party that can bring sustenance and development to the people of this country. And you are the man for that job? Well, yes. I mean, for, for the period that I can, I can mm. handle. But we are talking about... Yeah, Years to come. Exactly. And we have the opportunity to carry on with the development agenda of this country. Let me give you an opportunity to address the, 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 the people of this country uh, as we look forward to the super delegates and national delegates in November and possibly look forward to the 2024 general elections. Yeah, first of all, let me address the delegates, the mm -hmm. 961. I'm saying that the vision that I have for this country, for this party, knowing what is wrong, what is really making this party go down with a more low morale and so on, that I have big plans to revive their morale. And the, that morale revival is based on what I intend to do. 
to bring the principles of business and management into this party so we can generate income for the development of our party and also to pay our activists handsomely to encourage them to work harder for this party. That is not going to come in the short term because between 4 November this year and 7 December next year there isn't much but at least if I roll out my plans for this party it's totally unique from whatever anybody has had and it really is simple but very uh, visionary in the sense that it is something that is happening elsewhere it's not my own imagination that we are talking about AMC, ANC, the African National Congress of South Africa, Mandela's ANC, which owns mining companies, it owns insurance companies, it owns shares in big companies in South Africa and beyond, so that they can afford to pay corporate wages, salaries to their functionaries and their activists on the ground, create jobs for them and all of that. That is the vision that I want to bring to the new patriotic party. And that will really put us on a level which will enable us to rule not only breaking the 8, but breaking the 16, breaking the 32, breaking the whatever, to help the people of this country develop and enjoy life and standard of living like any other uh, decent society. That's the first thing. The second is to do with the, my vision for the country. This country is sitting on wealth. We all know that. Mm hasn't been exploited. My vision is to use agriculture as the, the, the spearhead of breaking the poverty cycle in this country. Mm. We've been financing our development with debt. Pensioners, borrowing money from pensioners, poor pensioners, and borrowing money from, from countries abroad, and borrowing money from the international markets. And for since the beginning of our republic, since the beginning of in, from our independence, mm. 66 years, we've had to rely on debt for our development. It won't work. It has never worked. It will never work. We have to get away from that cycle of borrowing money to fix our roads and to, to create our infrastructure and so on. Mm. Agriculture is, has the tools to be able to do that. The farmers of Ghana in the six years of my administration at the ministry have demonstrated to me clearly that if they are given the necessary help, they will deliver. Sure. And therefore, it's something that for me is a priority that we support the farmers in whatever they are doing and create the institutions to assist them. So that's why the Tree Development Authority, for instance, has been created under my watch, which is selecting six crops three crops, which are oil palm, coconut, rubber, mango, uh, and uh, shea, and then cashew. Mm. These six under one uh, roof to be developed to the level of cocoa where production will be so heavy that we can earn, even in raw state, in the raw colonial state, we can earn anything between six, seven, eight, 10, 15 billion US dollars a year and not having to go to the IMF every four years on average, 17 times that we've been, we're just coming out and the ink is still not dry yeah, dry. on the paper. <laughs> so I'm coming with a very simple vision and a very simple concept, using our soils, God-given soils, the rivers, the water, the rainfall, uh, and, 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 the, and, the, and the teeming labor, to turn these resources into money foreign exchange, I mean the amount of resources that are going across, the surpluses that we've created from planting for food and jobs, going across our borders without any official sanctions. Mm. So we are talking about the informal sector where we are, we are exporting informally something like a hundred million dollars worth of grains to our neighboring countries without any record in our national statistics, mm. without any record in our national bank, uh, central bank, 
by people bringing silver and naira and other currencies here, changing it on the black market, filling their trucks in, in droves of tens and twenties and crossing our borders and our customs of people looking the other way so that it doesn't enter in our statistics. All these things need the creation of specific institutions to enable us to take care of these, to bring these into the former sector mm. so that Ghana can benefit from the surpluses that we have created through planting for food and jobs and beyond. Mm. So my uh, uh, appeal to the delegates, this is the vision that I have. Compared to the vision of others, you will see that this is a very doable and very, very uh, easily uh, 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 digested concept that can actually turn it around. Not the gold, not the oil that we've been hoping for hundreds of years for the oil we started in the, uh, 2009 bringing it from under uh, the sea we we're hoping that by now the projection show we should have been doing 500 half a million metric uh, half a million barrels a day mm. where are we we have going backwards to the 110s and, and so on because we are not having enough investment in the upstream market mm. so the only practical alternative we have is to support our farmers to deliver to us and use that money for our industrialization, for our education, for our health, for our infrastructure, the motorways, the cocoa roads, all those uh, 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 infrastructure that we need in order to transform the economy. So I'm appealing to delegates using this opportunity provided by Joy FM and to say that your best bet is also a free akuto. So when it comes to it, on the 26th of August, on the 4th of November, remember this party, remember Ghana, and vote for Dr. Ousu Afri Akuto. Thank you. Thank you very much, Doctor, and wish you the very best. Hopefully, hopefully, in some few months, we can, we'll come here and I'll be speaking to you as a flag of the party. Yo, um, on the 5th of November, you'll be here. You're right. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay.